All right, we are at Daly Creek Trailhead here in Yellowstone National Park. It's Sunday around lunchtime. Um, this is a six day trip, five nights, six days. And our plan today is to get uh, beyond our designated campsite up to the Sky Rim uh, Trail. And that's gonna give us the option to legally, if we choose to camp outside the park. Um, and the reason for that is because tomorrow is such a long day to get to camp uh, number two is, is like a 12 mile day with a lot of ups and downs so if we can get uh, beyond our designated spot today and uh, get up to the ridge and camp down on the in the uh, gallatin forest somewhere uh, legally that would be great so we're gonna get started the guys are already on their way and uh uh we'll see you in a minute You can see the uh, rain is coming for us. Golf ball size hails. Ow, really hurts getting hit in the head with this stuff. So this is officially camp number one. I don't know as to we're gonna stay here or not, but I took a break here because we've been walking in the rain and hail for the past little while. There's Pete. And uh, we kind of came from this direction back here. And we're hoping it does a little more of that, a little more clearing, because we'd like to uh, continue on if possible. So it's a quick shot anyway. We'll see you in a bit. This hail, actually this hail is pretty good size. When it first started coming down, a little bit smaller than golf ball size and then it continued to be like three quarters of an inch or so if i uh go down here and take a look at some of these i mean that's that's pretty good size so kind of like walking in snow anyway let's a quick look yeah see you later Backcountry campsite WF2, uh, which is about 3.8 or 4 miles up from our starting trailhead. And uh, what you see is not snow, this is hail that's been on the ground for about three hours. And I apologize, as uh, I haven't done much narration or scene shooting as this first four miles in. Um, but, you know, it was really very windy when we started our hike. Couldn't talk much then, and about 15 minutes into the trip, uh, we start getting hit with, uh, well, it gets very overcast, there's, there's a lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, and all of a sudden, uh, hail. As big as my fist, far and away the biggest hailstorm I've ever been in. Uh, the only time in my life, and I have been in a lot of hailstorms, where it really hurt to get hit in the head, to the point that I had to seek cover. Um, we were walking across the meadow, I started seeing these big fist-sized balls, and then it turned into about golf-sized balls, and it just came down. Uh, and, you know, we didn't get a ton of lightning strikes to the ground, but you could, the sky was constantly lighting up, and the thunder didn't seem to stop. And it rained, and rained, and rained, and flooded, and we were constantly taking shelter. Uh, I was pretty, a little bit paranoid about getting struck by lightning, because we didn't have a ton of cover. Uh, and it took us a while just because we were taking so many uh, breaks to get out of the weather. And um, we ended up making our way up here to this campsite, um, which we are permitted to camp at. And I believe we're going to stay here. Um, we got a fire going, which was a lot of work because everything was wet. Uh, and to be honest with you, I totally did not see this coming at all. And in fact, 
I let myself get very wet, completely soaked, and I got very cold then. It's, we have a very hot forecast and somewhat dry forecast for this entire trip. And yet, I totally was sitting here battling hypothermia where I was when we first got to camp. Uh, because it just, the storm kind of came over us and did not move. And it just lightning, thunder, lightning, thunder, hail, 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 uh, really for several hours. I think it's about 4 o'clock now. So we're at least four hours into the trip. I got on the ground. That's, I think, one of the only times I've ever done that. I got on the ground and pulled my pack over my head. Getting just destroyed. And there wasn't really any trees at the first. But, um, you know, I didn't really get to tell you what the plan was uh, at the beginning of this trip. And so let me fill you in right now. Um, first of all, in order to camp in the Yellowstone backcountry, you have to have a permit. And you have to stay in designated backcountry campsites, which we are in right now. Um, however, in this particular spot, part of the park, uh, we're intending to go up onto the Sky Rim Trail and follow that for the next couple of days. The Sky Rim Trail uh, follows the boundary of Yellowstone National Park, and on the other side is the Gallatin National Forest. And in the National Forest, you don't need a permit to backcountry camp, and you can camp anywhere you would li like to. Um, so this is one of the few places you can get away with actually coming out here and going up onto the Sky Rim and being able to camp anywhere you want to as long as you're outside the park boundary. Uh, and so our original plan was to climb up past this spot, up onto the Sky Rim, and find a camp. Uh, we'd still reserve this backcountry campsite just in case anything went wrong, so we had it as a backup, and it's a pretty good thing that we did. Uh, because of the weather, uh, we ended up stopping, having to dry out, get the fire going, and it just really hasn't cleared up. Uh, we're also expecting some evening thunderstorms now as well. And, I mean, you can, you can see there's just a lot of bad stuff coming. Uh, so it's caused us to not want to uh, finish what is going on, and uh, that's kind of why we probably only got five scenes to uh, start this trip. But uh, this is camp. And just to give you a, a broader picture of what our plan is for this entire trip, once again we're starting up here, Daly Creek Trailhead, and uh, we plan to come up to Daly Pass, follow the Sky Rim, uh, most likely come down this trail, come by Crescent Lake, come over to High Lake, uh, then we'll come down and come over to Sportsman Lake, then we'll come up over uh, Electric Pass, and uh, kind of camp down here on the Gardner River and then on the last day uh, we'll hike out to this trailhead near Mammoth kind of by Bunsen Peak and uh, we have a vehicle there already waiting for us. Either the the smoke tree to dry them out. We got to get the stick and hold it over the fire. I, I figured get a nice toast going, put them on, <laughs> give my feet a, a little treat after what I just put them through. <laughs> they deserve it.
All right, here's a little shot of camp. Uh, as it turns out, we have decided to stay. So this is the direction that we came from earlier in the day. And we were ascended about a thousand feet. Only made it just under four miles. That's the bad news. And the good news is that we're still on, on target, technically. So back over here is a food prep area and where we had the fire going. I'll walk over here and uh, get my food bag down because one of the things they recommend here uh, in this park, as well as Glacier and a few others, is that before you set up your camp or do anything like that, that you find the food prep area and you hang your food. And so we did that. Um, made a little fire because it was really cold. Still drying out? Yeah, I feel pretty, I'm pretty dry except for just the socks. Now. Nice. Yeah, my feet are wet. That's about it. Anything else I need to do? And toasty. Okay, well, we are uh, winding down here at camp. We've all eaten. We've got uh, more storm clouds starting to form over the top of us. But, uh, anyways, I got a pretty fantastic group of people hiking with me on this trip. And rather than me tell you who they are, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what do you want to say, your moment of fame. Joe Zidian, Youngstown, Ohio. This is my first hiking trip ever. Never have done anything like this. Um, it was 105 degrees in Billings yesterday, and we started hiking at about noon. By 12.15, I was praying for it to rain because I was sweating so bad. And then by about 1 o'clock, the hail came, and I ended up shivering next to this fire. I'm still drying out my socks and keeping myself warm, but... I guess expect the unexpected out here. So far, Looking so good. Great and trip. this is your first backpacking trip ever. Ever, ever. And it's in Yellowstone National Park. First time in Yellowstone, yeah. too. Couple with, firsts. With grizzly bears. Grizzly bears, hopefully. Yeah. Well, they're here. You well, might not yeah, see them. But, but I mean, maybe we'll see one. Maybe yeah. we'll get lucky. All right. I'm hoping. Yeah. We have Something a good chance. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy just to be with these guys. I feel safe. I feel like, you know... <laughs> I'm going to be taken care of no matter how stupid I act because I will <laughs> act stupid and so I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be with the people that I'm with right now. Did they give you bear spray? I have bear spray, yes. All right. That's good. They care. Uh, hey, I'll use it if I have to. I'm not afraid of that. I said I forgot to say hi, Mom. Everybody at home, they're asking me to take all these pictures. That's not me. I don't do any social uh, media, don't have Facebook, nothing like that. So, hi, Mom. I'm going to give you this link when it's up. You're going to see the real thing. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from northern Indiana, and uh, it's my second time in Yellowstone. I came here with my family about 15 years ago. Uh, looking forward to the next couple of days going up, hiking up to the uh, Skyrim Trail and getting up high and hopefully getting some great views. Hopefully uh, seeing a moose at some point. And uh, so you, you told me you when you came here the first time it was like 1992. That was right after the fires. What did the park park yeah. look a little different then? It did. Um, probably half the trees were burned out. So uh, some of the big lookouts had some better views. So it, it was nice. Nice park. And you've also been out here. You've done a, a backpacking trip in the Tetons, right? Yeah, I backpacked with uh, Chuck and who you'll meet in a minute and uh, Matt and Dave. A couple years ago, so that was fun. I've tried to get out every year for a big backpacking trip, so try to do some weekend backpacking trips. Enjoy that. Awesome. And uh, is there any animal in particular you're hoping to see on this trip? <laughs> It'd be cool to see a wolf, but uh, moose moose would be great too. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Hey, well, there's a rumor someone someone saw a moose, but yeah, it's just a rumor. Just a rumor. Did. Hasn't been verified. Uh, Perfect. Anything else? No. Looking right. forward to the next four days. Awesome. Thank hey guys, you. Matt Wagner. I'm from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, 
been out to Yellowstone before, but never done anything in the backcountry. So I'm really excited about this trip. Uh, we talked about a lot of different places to go this year, and uh, this kind of was the one we chose. So excited to be with all these guys and with Joey kind of leading the way uh, here in a park that he knows well. So very excited about that. Hoping to uh, just have some great views and some great weather. And I'd love to see a grizzly. Unfortunately, we have Chuck along, so that typically yeah, well, leads we're not going to see anything. And but, explain uh, that to the camera. Why? Well, it's because his wife. It's really not because of Chuck. Uh, Chuck tries every year to see grizzly. He goes to the right parts of the country. However, his wife is, um, uh, well, we like to call her a prayer warrior. And she always prays that we don't see anything, uh, which I don't think is very cool at all. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, she's got a real connection with God on that one. So uh, we end up kind of kind of hosed on that deal. But uh, it's all Kim's fault. I love you, Kim. <laughs> she seems pretty powerful. She's not right now. She, Kim, well, Kim, she Kim seems pretty power. powerful I mean, for, for having no for, say. For a human being, in she's got a lot of power. She's, uh, I mean, Chuck would say she's kind of supernatural, so I'll go with that. She's, she's, uh, she's pretty right. good. But uh, stop praying. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, you've done some pretty epic trips out here. You've done some yes. epic trips in the Tetons. You were yes. in one of, really, the one of the... I think it was probably the second video I ever made. I don't even think I was using names yet. No, but uh, not. trip out yeah, to Wardenberger Lake. So you've, you've had some fun times in the Tetons. Yeah, we've had some real experiences. Uh, mostly great, man. It's a great park to be in. Uh, a lot of great terrain. Some really epic scenes and, and dramatic views. I, I love, I love being out there. And, uh, Chuck and I go out quite a bit, and of course I've been out with, with you, Joey. Uh, Ortenberger was probably my favorite place to go uh, mostly because nobody gets there so it's kind of a real cool place to get to for that reason but it is a beautiful area uh, the views around are great so I, I love it and uh, Glacier of course we've been to and last year went to Sawtooth the trip out in Utah so yeah I've had a chance to go on some really cool stuff so. well it's great to have you along Any, anybody you want to say hi to or no not really right. <laughs> I guess Dave my brother Dave he tends to come out with us once in a while so I'll give him a Dave, little, uh, little Dave's love. the man Dave yeah my brother Dave Wagner he's uh back you know who knows what he's doing right now but he's not out here which is pretty disappointing <laughs> he took a trip earlier in the year out to the Grand Canyon I think Chuck did him in so uh, he couldn't make this one but uh, what's going on Dave we're having a great time out here miss you miss you Dave hey guys Perfect. I'm Pete I live in San Francisco now but uh, only been there a couple years I uh, used to live in Chicago which is how I know Chuck and Salem so I've been hiking with those guys for a long long time this is perfect for me because I have not really had a trip out in the backcountry since I moved to San Francisco, believe it or not. And this is a big adventure because I drove all the way, and I've never, I've never been through Nevada, and never been to Idaho, and never been to Wyoming before this trip. So this is awesome for me. So this is your first backpack in Yellowstone. First backpack in Yellowstone. Yeah. That's awesome. First. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and uh, you've done some trips with Chuck before? Uh, a few, a few epic trips. Anything uh, memorable? Well, uh, the, the below. Yeah, 22 below in Michigan, I guess that was as memorable as <laughs> we want him to be. <laughs> and uh, poor Chuck uh, unfortunately couldn't start his truck when we finally got back. And, uh, but we left him there to go have a nice breakfast with hot coffee and pancakes and brought him coffee back as he was waiting for him. Uh, play, <laughs> so. a, just curious, uh, did Chuck puke on that trip? Uh, I don't believe so. <laughs> yeah, <summer> thing. <laughs> um, and I did want to I did want to say hi to my buddy Alec who's not doing real well right now and uh, Al hang in there keep up the fight and I'll see you on top buddy awesome thank you well that's the group guys wait are we missing someone we just one I think anybody else here kind of an important figure I think wait. I just don't remember his name I've heard legends about, about this guy Mahler or Mahler? Mahler? something like that <laughs> guy from Michigan that, yeah. uh, yeah. Chuck the Mauler. I give you Chuck Wolf. <laughs> My name's Chuck the Mauler. I'm from fashionable Royal Oak, Michigan. Uh, I just got back taking care of the, uh, the grizzly bears that were out there that were kind of threatening camp. So uh, so I was the last one to be on film here. Sorry about that. My hands got a little bloody on them, but uh, I'm good. Um, this is indeed my first trip to the backcountry of Yellowstone. I've been here many, many times. Uh, but never spent much time here other than some day hikes and things like that. So, um, I wanted to do some stuff over in the Lamar and really have a wild trip. And uh, our trip leader said that, that we weren't doing that. So we're stuck on the Skyrim. I don't know how that's going to turn out. So, um, we'll have to check back with you tomorrow.
Okay. <laughs> I lost my complete... No, 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 you gotta get back in the scene. Um, now, it turns out that you, uh, while this is your first backcountry trip here in Yellowstone, uh, a, a pretty, a range pretty close by that you uh, are pretty... Uh, big fan of. I, is it like the Wind Rivers or the Beartooths or Gallatin Range? Even better. You got expectations need to be even higher than that. Oh, the Uintas? Uh, well, you're getting close. Okay. But no, it's a little park south of here called Grand Teton National Park. And I've gotten to know it pretty well over the years. Um, I like it for a lot of different reasons. It's it's um, it's majestic, like glacier, but it's smaller, so it's more intimate, and so it just gives me a different kind of feeling. And and, and you can put yourself in a place there where even though it's a small park, you can literally spend you know weeks there and not see anybody. So the BS that you hear about the Teton Crest Trail and all that, um, it's beautiful and it should be done. But um, there's some amazing places in that park. So, yeah. Uh, question for you now. I, you're a. I, I know that you you're a you're a Christian, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you go to church. Um, so I'm just curious, like when you meet new people at church. Do you introduce yourself as Chuck the Mauler? It depends. Or do you, that's happened. Or or do you say you're you know Chuck Wolf? And I, I guess I'm just curious why well, the you're Chuck gonna, the Mauler. Right. Yeah, you know. Did you maul them? Is that why they know you? <laughs> like, are we ever gonna get the story about how you get the nickname the Mauler? You don't have to tell it to us now, but one of these days. Yeah, there's always that possibility, right. In the right circumstances. Just the fact that you know that my name's Chuck the Mauler. That's pretty good. Okay. So, it's um, for another day. All right. <clears throat> and uh, so, now, we're not going to see grizzly bears in this trip. Uh, that's not likely, no. And that's because your wife is My just... wife. And if there are any around, I, obviously, I'll take care of that for you guys. And uh, you did Mola. see you did see a, a pretty cool animal sighting. You were the only one. So there is a little bit of suspicion around it, but uh, of course. no. Well, when you lead the way, you know, you get to see things that everyone else doesn't get to well, see. You so. were the only one that could see in the blinding hail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we saw a moose. He, uh, I, we, we had a discussion last night about how birds and how they can be the first, like, line of defense. And I happened to hear some birds chirping that I hadn't heard at that, you know, t to that point. And so I started looking around, and there was a, a pretty good-sized bull moose running, like, along the tree line, and then he kind of darted in, and... I tried to get uh, a couple guys' attention, and it was too late. So they were all um, whether or not it really happened. I guess we'll never know. But that's my story. Okay. Um, and what did you think of the hailstorm that we had walking in here today? That was um, kind of crazy. Something I have not experienced in the backcountry ever. Um, of course, I didn't feel any of it. But <laughs> <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. It hurts me like it hurts everyone. How, how big were those chunks of ice falling? Well, when they sky? first started dropping, when they first started falling, I mean, they were, I want to say golf ball size, to be realistic about it. Maybe bigger, but I'm going to stick to that. And they were hitting Pete, and he was hiking right in front of me at the time, and he turned back <laughs> thinking maybe I was throwing stuff at him. Like, <laughs> and then from that point, they started to get smaller, but they were still, um, and that was more intense. I mean, like a snowstorm, but with hail. It was very painful. We were running to the trees. Um, which necessarily isn't necessarily a smart thing either, but they were probably three quarters of an inch around, you know, something like that. They were good size, good size hail, and it's still on the ground. That's the amazing thing. It's still here. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add about what you no, witnessed I'm ready to today? Be completely done with this interview. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, because I'm super happy to have you along. Yeah, no, I was one of my like favorite guys to hike with, and I'm happy to have you here. And I'm yep. sure everyone watching. This is. Stoked to have the mauler back. Trip number two for yeah, two of three Joey. if if Kim approves the third one, yeah. but uh, you'll have to work on that. More to come. This video is brought to you by Chuck the Mauler. <laughs>
about ready to hit the trail. The plan for today is to get up onto the Sky Rim Trail and just follow that uh, east and northeast. Uh, we're basically we're, we're supposed to camp at Crescent Lake, but that's a backup plan. That's also like 11 to 12 miles from here, maybe a little bit more. And we really don't intend to do that unless for some reason we just really find the hiking to be easy. Uh, to start off with, we're going to go up to Daly Pass, which is like one and a half miles. Uh, we're at about 7,500 feet above sea level right now, and we'll kind of get up to about 9,000 feet above sea level. And actually, when we get over to Bin Bighorn Peak, uh, which is about eight miles from here, uh, that's a, close to 10,000. That's like above 9,800 feet. Uh, and I think really the plan is to just find a place to camp up along the Skyrim Trail outside of the park in the forest. Uh, there's some pretty sweet spots that I've seen up there before, so as long as the weather is good, uh, most likely we're going to do that. And right now the weather is perfect, but it looked like this yesterday at 10 o'clock too, <laughs> so um, who knows how it's going to play out. Uh, Chuck, Pete, and Salem went ahead. We usually uh, like to send the mauler out for all of us. He likes to like, uh, you know, check out the trail. If there's any trees down, he like cleans them up. Uh, He's got like a chainsaw with him too, doesn't he? No just question. Cuts trail, no so doubt. maybe we'll see a bear because uh, won't be with us because he's not with yeah. us. But <laughs> all right, time Let's to hit, hit the, the trail. trail. Do it. Good luck. We have made it up to Daly Pass. It's pretty buggy. Not much views, but this is looking back when we just came up. Oh, good morning. It's, uh, I was going to say the beginning of day two, but it's kind of not. Um, we were camped down in this meadow down here uh, last night, and uh, Got there really early, like I said, because of the hail and the snow and rain and everybody's stuff was wet, so we just hung out there. But so this morning we had a uh, about a mile and a half to get up to the Skyrim Trail, and uh, I'm not quite there yet. But here's the thing: it's more like two and a half miles. I went a mile and a half to get to what was the, the trail junction, and then from there it says point eight, and I've got the better part of that knocked out. Um, went on ahead of the guys this morning, and. Uh, uh, so yeah, here I am kind of waiting for Pete and Salem who are right behind me and then, uh, uh, Matt, Joe, and Joey were probably, I don't know, 10-15 minutes behind that. Uh, so let me give you a quick look around. I'm, I'm walking like what's a, the park boundary, I believe. Um, it's like a crest trail, like this side, you know, drops down, you know, a thousand and some odd feet. And if you look back this way, you can see... Uh, this is kind of looking north, and uh, oh, let me go the other way with this. Here we go, and I believe that's the Gallatin Mountains ahead of me, and you, of course you saw them off this way as well. Um, and as I turn and look further northeast, uh, this um, is a view of I think the Absorcus or the Beartus. I'm not 100% sure on that, but whatever it is, it's incredible. What a view. There's still some snow up here. I don't know how well that kind of comes in on the camera, but uh, um, the snow capped peaks really a fantastic contrast and make it really pretty. Now, what we've got left here is this trail's ahead of me, and I think we're going to be going up here, uh, where, and I think we'll drop down just the other side of that ridge, and that is what I believe is officially the Skyline Trail. There's a trail junction that's going to head off to the left, and we're going to kind of go right and head east. 
back into Yellowstone. So that's a quick look around. It's a pretty incredible view. Making our way along the Sky Rim Trail. Uh, we've got like eight bumps until we get over to a little lookout right there. And at that point, we'll decide uh, where we're going to camp tonight whether we drop down into the Galton Forest and camp or if we're going to drop uh, down to the lake, Crescent Lake, I think is where we're scheduled to camp. Uh, quick look at why they call it the Sky Rim Trail. You're literally walking on uh, like the crest here that divides. Uh, the park, Yellowstone National Park, and uh, the Gallatin Mountains, so, or the Gallatin National Forest. So there's a quick peek. View back where we came from. Uh, biggest part of the work is done, but we're gonna head back here. This is the uh, Skyrim Trail, and we're gonna be heading this way. So we should have some uh, pretty outstanding views the rest of the day. So in this view, you can—that's uh, actually like the Big Sky area out there. And uh, you can see Daly Pass, which is uh, down here. And so, since we hit Daly Pass, kind of walk this ridge trough top up and down, up and down, goes out of sight, gets up to where we're at. All right, we have made it up uh, to our the trail junction. Uh, I really don't know which trail junction, but I know the trail goes that way out of the park. Technically, this is where the Sky Rim Trail begins, I guess. But uh, I actually think it begins down there at Daly Pass. Um, but at this point, Sky Rim Trail is going to uh, basically follow the ridge top, and you can kind of see some of it out there. Uh, it does not take the path of least resistance. It basically goes up to uh, every high point that it can, drops down into every goalie, and then goes back up. Uh, to the top of the ridge. So a lot of bumps, a lot of up and down. It can be very deceiving if you look at it and say, yeah, you started at a base elevation of 7,000, you're going to go up to 10,000. That's only 3,000 feet. Uh, I'm going to guess it's a lot more than that, but uh, we'll know by the end of the day. So at any point you can just like kind of all of a sudden smile, maybe wave at the camera. <laughs> I'm not one who loves the camera, actually. That's... <laughs> can tell from everything you have to say. You're always just shying away, not talking. I'm just trying to oblige the trip leader, that's all. Mm -hmm. You are the trip leader, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Cheer for the ride, like always. I, let, I was out in front today to make sure I took care of all the grizzly bear activity that was taking place so the trail was safe by the time you guys got there. We knew. We said that in this morning shot. So in this shot, you can kind of see what I mean by the trail has a lot of bumps and it follows the ridge line. You should be able to see the guys hiking down here and uh, you know the trail will go actually up over this bump, it'll go up over this bump, and it'll go up to that bump, and I actually think it'll go to that bump, and then in the distance it might actually go to that bump. So it's just kind of, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Bumps, lots of bumps. There isn't much uh, water here up in the Sky Rim, so you kind of have to take what you can get.
All right, it is night number three. Uh, we are back on target. We made it to uh, High Lake, which is our designated site for tonight. Uh, we came in from back this way. Um, we had about an 11 mile day today. Um, actually wasn't too bad. Uh, you can't tell from here, but there's an otter out there playing here at uh, High Lake. You can see that big ripple in the water right there or not. But. So there's an otter, some deer up here. Um, haven't really seen too much for wildlife. Uh, Joe saw a bear and had a bear in camp last night. Uh, we didn't uh, have any part of that. So as I swing around here, here is camp. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. We squeezed all, all six tents in here. Um, and then up this way is uh, uh, the food pole where you hang your food and all your smelly stuff and then at the other side of that little bump right there is uh, the food prep area. I'm gonna walk over there now show you that and uh, take up pictures as the sun's starting to set here mosquitoes are pretty thick and heavy uh, fortunately we've all got DEET and that's very helpful so let me show you around all right here's the food prep area I was telling you about not very exciting lots of mosquitoes Pete and Salem wrapping it up I'm gonna make my way down to the lake. Um, as I'm doing that, you'll see Matt up here in the trees, hanging his food. There's a bag way up there right now. Let's look at that, holy mackerel. There it is. So let me take you down to the lake, check it out. Well, here's the other side of camp here. Um, you can see what is Electric Peak right there. Um, we're going to be a little closer to that tomorrow. We're going to be over at Sportsman Lake. Um, finding it very difficult to shoot video while we're hiking. It's, um, I don't know if it's the elevation. It's just difficult. So pretty much just shooting, taking pictures and uh, shooting video in camp both in the morning and at night when I can. So. Um, yeah. All right, we've made it to camp, uh, day four. Uh, it's Sportsman Lake right in front of us here. And we are camped at site WD3. As we pan around, you can see the meadow in a typical Yellowstone fashion here. And I'm gonna see if we can scroll up just a little bit. Uh, that is Sportsman's Pass up there. And so that is right up here. That is tomorrow's. Tomorrow morning's job <clears throat> is to get over that. So, but for today, we're going to sit here and enjoy the meadows here. See if we can uh, spot some wildlife after the dinner hour. And uh, probably enjoy a fire as well. Let me turn you around, give you a look at that. <clears throat> Here's the newly rearranged seating area. We've added additional seating over here to the back, as you'll see. <laughs> Compliments of uh, Mr. Coconato. Very nice. And, uh, and uh, we've got started to collect some firewood so that we're ready to take on the killer mosquitoes that are going to be moving in uh, after the sun goes down. So, so that's a quick look at that. <laughs> and we'll show you camp a little later. Actually, it's a food prep area. I'll take you up there. See, we're following protocol and everybody's food is hung safely uh, on the tree. So. We'll see you after dinner. Honey while was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had and something. And if only I had your sauce. <laughs> Life would have been so much better. Careful what you say. You're on video. She loves it. She's all right with it. She knows she makes it well. Uh, 
I'm getting there. Come on, Chuck. Yeah, baby. All right, let's see if that's enough. So you were saying that's better than Angela's sauce? <laughs> and better than her pesto sauce because she doesn't make that. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Not bad. Nice. Amazing. Good. Like I'm in New York, a little Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, good morning. It's uh, day five. Uh, we are well en route uh, to camp for night six. Um, boy, I'm at a loss of words right now. We're climbing up uh, 2,100 feet here uh, to this pass. And uh, this is really the first time I've had a chance to uh, pull the camera out just because we've been in heavy camping and heavy forest. Um, so we're just now starting to get up above tree line, but there's still a great deal of work to do. So there's a quick look back towards in the direction of camp. You know, we were we were back down there uh, quite a little ways. Um, didn't really have any uh, wildlife activity last night in camp. We had a couple elk come in and they barked at us. They sound exactly like dogs. Uh, they're not bugling. It's not that time of year, but they were barking. Very cool. So quick peek. I'll show you more when we get to the top. I can uh, fight off these flies. See ya. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, we are at the top of Sportsman Pass, and we finally the curse is broken right here. Two cubs. Make sure I'm in the right spot here. Sow and two cubs, brown bears. They're, they're safe distance away. Uh, it's cool to finally have a, a little brown bear activity. So we made it up to the pass. 2,100 feet was the climb today back this way. Uh, you can't see our lake, but sitting down below that ridge is uh, a Sportsman Lake where we camped last night. And way off in the distance, you can see that there's a tower up there. Well, it's a fire tower, some kind of a lookout, and we were well on the other side of that before we started. So we've come a little ways. Now, this is our last bump. Nice. 